Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to get up to 160,000 experience an hour in Zulfarak as a paladin without using a single consumable. We're going to start with the preparation required. The first thing you'll need is a spirit set. A spirit set is just a whole set of gear that has as much spirit stacked on it as humanly possible. You can slowly accumulate this through questing or you can buy pieces pretty cheaply on the auction house. Second, you'll want a tanking set, stacking as much armor, stamina, strength, and defense as possible. This set will help you to get to the pool itself, as it will increase your survivability and reduce your chance of being dazed. I'd also highly recommend getting the Torch of Holy Flame from the Morbent Fell quest line. This gives you an additional 30 yard pull at a very low cooldown, making it easier to pull additional mobs. From now on, the rest of the items are optional. Next, we'd need mana potions. Minor, lesser, normal mana potions will give us more mana, which in turn will give us more damage during the pull. You could also get healing potions, as you can use them during the stage of getting to the pull, just to give you more survivability. Next, you can get oil of immolation, which gives you more damage done when you're bubbled during the pull. Additionally, you can learn engineering and get some grenades as they can be used for additional damage during the pull. Dense Dynamite is probably the best option, followed by Thorium Grenades. If you're rich, you could also buy Goblin Sapper Charges to use when bubbled. Next, you can get a Mage Blood Potion for added MP5, again giving you more mana. Scrolls of Spirit are also nice to have for even more mana regen, as well as Scrolls of Intellect for an even higher mana pull. Another good shout is Knife and Soup for even more MP5. Or for a cheaper option, you could just get any Stam Spirit well fed buff food, such as Spider Sausage. I would also say that Invisibility Potions have some potential, however, I don't recommend them personally due to the move speed loss you'd get from using them instead of being mounted. Extremely optionally, you could also go to Stormwind and talk to Archbishop Benedictus. From level 39 onward, he offers the quest, Bring the Light, where he gives you a 32 stam buff for 30 minutes when you accept the quest. You can then abandon it and take the quest again to receive the buff once more. Now we'll go over talents. From 40 to 50, we will be using this, skilling down holy for consecrate which is our main damage source, Protection, for reduced cooldown and blessing of protection, and Retribution, for pursuit of justice. From level 40 onward, we skill further down Holy, for reduced cooldown on Lay on Hands, which can be used as a scuffed 40 min cooldown mana pot, as well as a heal. And then we aim to go for improved blessing of wisdom, to give us an extra 5 MP5 at level 45. From 46 to 50, we skill into protection to reduce our damage taken, and reduce the chance we get dazed. And from 50 to 54, we will be using this. We sacrifice Blessing of Wisdom's extra MP5, so that we can instead get Sanctity Aura. This will give us 10% more damage. We also sacrifice the extra survivability of the prot talents, but it doesn't matter as it'll be easier to not aggro mob packs en route to the pool as well as we'll have higher resist and dodge rates due to the mobs being much lower level than us now. It's also worth noting that, at level 44, you want to get your training in Theramore from Brother Carmen for a new rank of Blessing of Wisdom. Level 42, 46 and 48 training does not matter. Then, at 50, you want to go to Ironforge to respec to the 50 to 54 talents, as you cannot respec at Brother Carmen. At level 50, you will train a new rank of Divine Shield, where the duration increases by 2 seconds. Lay on Hands, where the mana is set to 550, up from 250. And Holy Wrath, which is your new big dick damage spell. Here are some add-ons I'd recommend using for this. First, we have Weak Horrors. The first Weak Horror is one that lets you automatically dismount when you try casting a spell. This would allow you to bubble quickly or stun a mob, without having to manually dismount during the time you're travelling to the graveyard. The second weak aura is one that shows forbearance in the middle of your screen when it's active. 
This is to make sure you don't accidentally go for a bubble when you do have the debuff. The third weak aura is to show when one of your blessings have expired. This will make you have a higher blessing of wisdom uptime and therefore more mana. Second, we have item rack. Item rack would allow you to make a tank and spirit set which you can change into with the click of a mouse. This will save you boatloads of time each pull once you set it up, instead of having to manually put on each piece of gear. And third, Liatrix, which is the best add-on in the game, allows you to sell junk automatically, as well as loot even faster than the built-in auto-loot option given by Blizzard. Lastly, we have Drop the Cheapest Thing. This add-on allows you to drop junk items in one shift left click, rather than opening your bags and dropping it manually. It allows you to add exceptions that won't be dropped by using control left click. Now, we can go over the journey to getting to the graveyard. We're going to start with the first run I did at level 40. You can buff wisdom here and get well fed if you want, but the most important thing is to have devotion aura and to be in your tank set. You start by taking really wide lines to avoid taking hits from the first three packs. Then you'll see me doing this thing where I'm jump turning to face the mob. This is to do two things. One, it gives myself a chance to dodge, parry and block so I'll damage mitigate. And two, to not get dazed. This is because you only get dazed if you're hit from behind. Once you're all the way through, you can jump up on this wall on the left side and then running jump onto this wall. When you've jumped, do not hold W, or you will fall off like this. Once you're on the side of the wall of evade spot 1, press space and then W, as this will be the safest and most consistent way of doing these series of jumps. Now that you're on the wall, the mobs behind you will start to evade. Don't worry about the mobs below you, only worry about aggroing the basilisk on your left and try to outrange it as much as possible so it doesn't infinite aggro onto you and keep you in combat. Once you're in your mid 40s, and depending on the damage mitigation leading up to this point, you won't have to use this evade spot sometimes, and you'd be able to run through the basilisk and go straight to evade spot 2 or even 3. While we're here, we can talk about the mobs. At this part of the instance, there are three different mob types, Witch Doctors, which are melee, and summon wards which you may have to kill with judgement when you are evading in a spot, with the fire ward doing 150 damage every 3 seconds in an 8 yard radius. Blood drinkers, which are melee and have a roughly 50 damage instant 8 yard AoE around themselves. And shadow casters, which have a 300 damage shadow bolt spell, which you may have to put effort toward LOSing. Now, we can get onto the second evade spot. You're going to mount up and jump toward the mountain to dodge this pack as much as possible, then jump turn the second pack. If things go badly, you're supposed to evade here. If you do evade here, be sure to hide behind this part of the fallen pillar. And if a witch doctor places a ward here or here, then be sure to judgement it to kill them. Otherwise, this happens where the ward causes the mobs to re-aggro even on my level 60 paladin here. However, I only got hit once and I LOS'd a lot of the shadow casters, so I could skip this evade spot. So now, you're going to go very close to the opposite wall. This is because of the pack on your left, as well as only witch doctors or shadow casters being found on this wall, which are easily LOSable around this fallen pillar here. You will then jump over or onto this pot and sometimes you will get lucky enough to not be hit by this mob here. Keep running all the way through. And now, you will encounter two new mob types. The first are Soul Eaters. These have a 5 yard, 2 second cast time spell for 100 mana and health drain. They also seem to swap health with mobs that have a lower health than them, so their XP may be reduced if you pull them with dead heroes. The second are Shadow Hunters. They are ranged and have a 20 yard instant cast hex that lasts for 12 seconds. And it is only removable by using bubble. 99% of the time though, you won't get hexed if you ride through them normally en route to the graveyard. 
All you have to do now is just continue to run through, jump turning as much as you can to mitigate damage. Run through Thekka's room, and then through this final corridor. You then have the option of resetting in the third main evade spot here, which I did due to my low level and low health, or to continue to the first grave pull. We'll now go over every other optional evade spot I recommend using for when you're doing this farm. This first evade spot is if you get dazed early. You can't mount up after you've evaded the mobs, but you should be able to get to the first main evade spot as long as you have full health and bubble. This is the second evade spot. You need to get here before the mobs behind you get in melee range, or you'll die. You should be able to LOS them easily though. Just be aware of the patrol that can come and perma aggro in front of you. If that happens, then you just run into this third, very optional spot. This is the fourth spot. By just jumping onto here, the mobs should evade. The only bad thing is that, if you aggro Thekka, he has a 4.5 second cast time, 500 damage ranged spell, which then does some damage over time. However, you can purify or cleanse off the door it gives. If he starts casting his spell, you can run to the fifth spot, which will help you to LOS him. You can also jump up the pot here and into this gap to LOS him even harder. Now, we can get into the graveyard section. You will start off by riding into the boss room. I usually use this line for reference here, and you'll know when you've done it properly, as you'll see the boss say something in the chat window. Next, you're going to start opening every single grave on this side. Try not to stop, as time is pretty important. I fuck up here though and get scared by the days, so I panic bot and miss a grave, as well as force myself on forbearance cooldown, but it's still fine. Speed run to the back of this pot here, and wait for all the mobs to evade. If you had to bubble like I did, then you have to wait out the forbearance here. Once they evade, you're going to click all of the graves on this side. This is probably the riskiest one, but just zoom out your camera and spam click all of them without stopping, and you should be good. After you open the last grave on this side, use bot, or divine shield in my case, and run to evade spot 3. Make sure they can't see you via LOS here, otherwise they might re-aggro. If you think that's the case, then you can jump onto the wall behind you, like this. Then, equip your heal set. After they evade, jump down and open the last set of graves. Be careful of the patrol that pokes his head out of the corridor over here. If you use enemy nameplates, it should help you to see him through the wall before he aggroes onto you and you can delay opening the graves until it patrols back. Open the last set of graves, then return to the wall of the third evade spot. Before getting into the pull phase, we'll start by talking about the patrol that comes into the room. We'll call him Andy. Andy can either be a soul leader, blood drinker, witch doctor, or shadow hunter. You can kind of see when Andy is coming, when you're on the wall of the boss room. But there's a blind spot here, where you just have to hope Andy isn't there if you start the pull. Pre-level 50, getting a soul leader and a blood drinker is fine. See it as bonus XP. If you get a witch doctor, you can do the pull, but I'd recommend resetting and pulling again due to how hard it'll be to keep the mobs stacked. As well as the XP loss from not being able to kill the dead heroes. If you ever pull a Shadow Hunter at any level, then just reset. Simply put, their hex will kill you. If you do see Andy, but you haven't pulled him yet, then you can jump up and down this platform and the kill spot wall here until the mob either goes past enough for the mobs to sneak past and not proximity aggro him or until the mob goes back into the stair boss fight room. If you wait for too long on the platform, then the mobs will reset. Move the mobs every 10 seconds or so to be safe and not risk a full reset. At level 50 plus, 
You never want to pull Andy due to how your spell rotation changes. Andy doesn't get pulled every time, but knowing what to do in each mob type situation is very important. We're quickly going to go over some terms for future use. This is a kill wall. This is a kill spot. This is a jump wall. This is a jump spot. This is a greed wall. This is a greed kill spot. This is a greed jump spot. And this is a drop spot. So when you start the pull, you have two options. The slow and safe option, or the fast but harder option. The slow option revolves around waiting on the wall for the evades, and then mounting up and jumping into the corner here. You then fully regen if you haven't already, then pull two mobs here with exorcism and turn undead, which should be enough to aggro the mobs in this corner. The fast option revolves around jumping up the wall without mount, whilst the third set of grave mobs are aggroed. You just gotta get the right angle, then do the exact jump pattern of evade spot 1. You can then immediately start the pull without having to cast or wait for anything, saving you about 20 seconds each time you do this per run. I'm unsure if Dwarfs, Draenei, and Blood Elves would be able to do this jump, as I haven't tested it. After whichever option you choose, you then jump over the boss here, which will pull him every time until about level 50. It's worth noting that, rarely, a Witch Doctor will spawn next to the boss. If this happens, and you pull him, you have a hard, but doable, pull ahead. We'll get into this later. The boss himself isn't scary at all, and will only require you to be a bit aware of your LOS during the route you take to get to the jump spot, as he evades easily. You should aggro the zombies under the arch, either with the torch of holy flame, grenades etc, as sometimes they don't pull. Then, jump across the next corner of the boss room, and start running along the kill spot wall. Stop at the kill spot, as when you're in the final third or so, the mobs will stop and start to evade unless they're past the bottom corner of the pillar in front of you, or you jump onto the jump spot wall. But we'll get into this later. As we're doing a no consumable run, we'll stay on the kill spot. Remember to keep a lookout for Andy to see if you need to steal the mobs or not by jumping onto the platform below. Wait until all the mobs have crossed the pillar here, then jump down and pull the corner mobs. You can use your torch, exorcism, hammer of justice, etc. And you can then pull any stragglers that were left behind. Then, you'll bubble at the last moment, and stack the mobs as much as you can in this corner. At about 2 seconds left, jump up, and do the jump shown before. You can now wait up here for all the mobs to run up, and they should be pretty neatly stacked. Now's the kill phase. We'll start off by using max rank consecrate every time we can in the kill spot. Remember where it was shown before, and use the arrow on the wall for a visual reference. Try to stay a bit further back on the wall, as you can get one shot here if you're unlucky. Don't worry about all the resists that you see either. Mobs can only resist the first tick of Consecrate, and, at worst, partial the rest. After the first mob has pretty much run through the whole Consecrate, drop down and start running toward the Greed Wall. If you have loads of mana, which you typically do pre-50, then place a Consecrate at the Greed Spot when the mobs get within nameplate distance, which is about 20 yards or closer. Then, to keep the mobs stacked, do the Greed Jump as this has a chance of making mobs turn and go down into the drop spot, rather than following you along the greed wall and the jump wall. Then, run back to the kill spot before the mobs get there, and consecrate again. This is your typical loop. This pull will be a good example of the greed jump, due to the mobs being on different tick timers. This is due to them being pulled at different times. If this happens, Give yourself more space before you drop down. You'll gain more distance from the tail of the mobs, aka the size of the stack, due to them having to run back through the kill spot, as it keeps them in place for another one or two seconds. You'll see that the two close dead heroes fell for the greed jump, and helped us to reduce the tail of the mobs. You'll see that I'm using rank 1 consecrates at this point, as this is because of the XP leash, which is a mechanic where you get reduced XP from a mob, if they haven't taken damage for 30 seconds, 
equivalent to their remaining HP percentage. So if I damage a zombie down to 60%, don't do any damage to it for 40 seconds, and then kill it, I'll only get 60% XP total from that mob. You should be passive with your consecrates until you can either restack the mobs with a greed jump, jump spot, or a drop. But paladins also have another trick to restack, which is their bubble. Their bubble is both their failsafe for restacking the mobs nearly completely, as well as their main utility spell for keeping the zombies in the damage source of consecrate. Be aware though, that using bop removes blessing of wisdom, so remember to use a weak aura so you get reminded to rebuff. Always use a bubble on the kill spot if possible, as when the duration on it is a second, you can just jump over here and run whilst the mobs are soaking damage in the biggest radius possible for max rank consecrate. Bubbles are also the best time to use your consumables if you brought any along, such as oil of immolation or grenades. If there's ever one mob that's quite a bit ahead of the rest, then don't be afraid to use rank 1 hammer of justice on the mob to restack it with the rest. Or you can sacrifice some health to tank hits, so that it stands still for a moment, to better restack it. When dropping down, I would recommend moving your mouse to face the mob. This is so you don't get dazed as you're falling down, as being dazed in the drop spot has a high chance in you ending up dead. You also might have noticed I don't have my torch on after using it to pull. That's because you can switch to a shield mid-combat that can have more spirit on it. A logout phase? You must be crazy! Nope. We are optimizing this too, boys. Press escape, then go into key bindings. Scroll down until you find interact with mouse over. Change this to something like scroll wheel. You can then use scroll wheel to loot the mobs faster rather than spam right clicking every time. There might also be some mobs stuck on the side of the cliff. If you have to jump parallel, Jump from semi far back on your mount when the cliffs are aligned straight with your character. This is pretty hard to do, so it's optional due to the time investment. After looting, you'll then use item rack to switch into your tank set, before eating and drinking to near full mana and health whilst logging out. You then have three options. Logging out solo and waiting about five and a half minutes which will then TP you to the start of the instance where you have to go out and reset manually. Riding out solo and doing the same thing, which takes about two minutes, and is also risky for lower levels. Getting somebody else to set up a group view and giving your main character leader so you're able to reset it on your main after two minutes for your ult. Or getting someone else to simp hard or using your own second account and reset as soon as your character logs out, taking about 30 seconds. Doing the journey 10 levels later, it becomes a lot easier. You don't need to zigzag so hard here now. And now you can ride straight through this part, rather than jumping up to the first main evade spot. You don't need to go behind evade spot 2 anymore either. You can take much straighter, faster lines, due to your aggro radius being much smaller, and you will only rarely need to evade mobs due to the level difference giving you much higher damage mitigation. This allows you to get to the pull a lot faster. Now that you're level 50, you have Sanctity Aura available. If you follow the talents, be sure to switch to Sanctity after completing the travel phase. The graveyard and pull phases stay the exact same at this level, but the changes start here. You cannot pull Andy. Andy will not take damage from your new spell, Holy Wrath, which is your new main damage spell which you use on cooldown every minute, which has a 20 yard range. You don't need to worry about the Witch Doctor that could spawn with the boss either, as you are high enough level to not automatically proximity pull him every time you jump over. So, starting with a pull, you can now wait here for the mobs to come and pre-cast a Holy Wrath into your new rank 4 Consecrate. Due to having a new rank of Consecrate and a Holy Wrath, Mana becomes more important than ever, and the amount of greed spot consecrates you'll be able to do falls dramatically. Try to use Holy Wrath on cooldown, sacrificing higher ranks of consecrates if required to do more Holy Wraths. Be sure to use it only when you can hit every mob though, such as in Bubble, or when you have space and time to use it when the mobs are stacked. 
there's a big chance you'll be using rank 1 and rank 3 consecrates a lot more often in order to keep up the XP leash on the mobs. Pulls at this point start getting around the 10 to 12 minute mark, so you may hit the hourly instance cap if your mana regen is high enough. Because my bubble stack sucked during the pull, I had to go to the jump spot. So I jumped back and forth to stack the mobs. Something I haven't mentioned before are these skeletons that the boss summons from a ward. You can ignore them as they don't deal too much damage, but just be sure to jump turn their hits as they can daze you as you're doing the pull. The ward itself expires after about 20 seconds, and the mobs automatically die after 20 seconds. So here's a pull with two witch doctors. They're a massive pain if you do pull them, due to how much they unstack the mobs. But sometimes it's unavoidable due to them being with the boss that will automatically aggro at a lower level. Remember that you're not here to kill the witch doctors. In terms of using consecration, pretend the witch doctors don't exist. They're hard to stack because they have a cast time on a healing ward and flash heal, both of which heal dead heroes. Because of this, you can expect that pre-50, there's very little chance of you being able to kill the dead heroes due to not having holy wrath. Remember to use only rank 1 Hammer of Justice, as a longer duration will usually mess up the stack. And remember to only do this if you have to kill the Witch Doctor. If you accidentally pull a Witch Doctor Andy, then I'd recommend to just reset and pull again. Once you've finished the pull, and the dead heroes and Witch Doctors are still alive, you can reset in any of these spots. The pull will also be available in a link in the description below. To get up here, do a jump like you did in Evade Spot 1. At level 40 and 41, there's a chance when you're along the greed wall, you can pull this pack on your right. Just be aware to hang on to the close left side of the greed wall if you see them approaching. In TBC, this farm should become a lot more viable. This is due to getting mount at level 30, Consecrate being learnt as a general spell rather than talented, and Pursuit of Justice being increased from 8 to 15% move speed, which will really help with your speed and your damage mitigation. I'm going to predict that it can be done at about 37 or so with even better effect, but we'll have to wait for the beta to come around to truly test out its viability, due to private server pathing being terrible. And I think that's everything. Comment below if you need help or you have any questions. I have my full runs uploaded here on my YouTube of the 40, 53 and Witch Doctor pulls. VOD highlights are on my Twitch of my ZF runs on my 2 days 22 hours slash played Paladin if you ever want to watch any of the full pulls. I'd like to thank Jolle, Mouse Hope and Magnox for helping me to make improvements to this pull and farm. It really helped. So yeah guys, thanks for watching. If this helped, then be sure to leave a like, and if you want to see more guides like this leading into TBC, then be sure to subscribe. See you guys soon.